Well, good day and welcome to the show. My name's Grant Lee and um, I am so privileged and honoured to be speaking to my guest today. He has just released uh, a new single just a few days ago, 27th of August. Uh, UK-based worship leader and artist songwriter Noel Robinson joins us today. How are you doing today, Noel? You all right? Hey, Lee. Great to be here, man. Great to be here. I hope you can hear me really well. But um, yes. Yeah, I can. You're looking good, Noel. I tell you what, the grace of God is definitely on your life, man. Well, we're you trying, look, trying, you look trying so to keep well. stuff, you know, trying to keep it young, you know. <laughs> I know, and I'm one of those privileged people who actually know that you're going to be cel celebrating a milestone um, birthday. Yeah, well, um, we if it, if next is it next year? Next year. year. Next year. Next year. Next year. Next uh, year. We won't go into exactly what the milestone is. For those who know, know, and if you don't know, then I guess you've got to get to know some somewhere else. But um, <laughs> yeah, it's a very exciting time for you, Noel. You've got this new single, um, which is called "You Are Un." And unrivaled. unrivaled. Sorry, I beg your pardon. Yeah. I just got my I just got my teeth fixed and and now I've got to sort out my glasses. I think, <laughs> but yeah, you you are unrivaled. Okay, you yeah. wrote the song or you it was co-produced with Enoch John. Yeah, I wrote Enoch the song. John. And, yeah, and Enoch John's tell, an amazing. Tell us about that. Yeah, who, um, who is Enoch? Who is Enoch? Because I I I I'm, I'm not aware of who he is. Actually, Enoch, Enoch's like a, um, an, an amazing um, producer and a musician who, um, you know, he plays for me and he's a worship pastor at a church. But actually, as a producer, he's quite unique in that um, he has a very, very um, contemporary touch and, and um, outlook, but phenomenal musician. If, if, you're in that, if you're in that world and you kind of mention Enoch Jong, people kind of know that yeah, um, he's a he's a kind of always a silent guy in the background, but actually an amazing, amazing interpreter of um, of of words and sound and melody. Um, you got to look out. You got to look out for those quiet types, haven't you? Really? Yeah. <laughs> there's, no, there's, yes, an old, yes, there's an old you. Caribbean saying: "Empty um, is it empty barrel make the most noise?" Most noise. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. So look, Enoch, yeah. Enoch helped you to co-produce the song. I. I've listened to the song now. Thanks for sending it, by the way, um, quite a few times. And um, I'm loving the song um, to the point where I've already scheduled it for one of my, my radio shows. Um, and I, when I say things like that, I don't say it lightly. You know, I'm very um, brutal. If I don't like a song, <laughs> you ain't getting in my playlist. But, um, <laughs> Thank you. you know, I, I am, I've always been a big fan of yours. You should know that over the years we spoke to each other quite a few times. Um, no exceptions right here. So um, I love the song. You are unrivaled. Um, I love what it's about. I love what it stands for. Okay, now um, the actual song itself, like I said, I've listened to it quite a few times and it's very rem reminiscent of um, the kind of music that um, Graham would, would put together. Um, tell me about the influences for the song now and... and, and Break down the lyrical content for me. Okay, let's let's start with the lyrical content, and and I'll and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the casing that it's in. Um, mm -hmm. One of the things um, um, I I believe what God was doing uh, to me during the pandemic, He was He was He was proving to me in the pandemic that He's supreme. That God is not just in COVID, the season, but He's actually outside of it you know he lives in our world but actually god is um supreme above it all so there's nothing that takes him by surprise everything that's happening whether you think of it as a good thing or a bad thing everything that is happening god is supreme jehovah elohim and i wanted to remind people of god's supremacy but his supremacy is not this far of god that that's way up high up in the himalayas and we can't touch him we can't see him. He's actually a God that is involved with your everyday living and your everyday consciousness. And I wanted to bring that picture up. And that's what we wanted to bring in that song. And we had this thing where the chorus talks about, you know, Jesus, you are unrivaled. This means that you're supreme. You're the champion of the world. You know, you are like you are the winner. You've already won. Right. And I also wanted to highlight the fact of our humanity and how 
we live in our matrixes and our bubbles and things become our idols rather than God. So in the pandemic, pandemic, when everything was shaken, your financial world, your working place, your health, everything was shaken. I wanted people to realize that, that it's so easy for us to fall into, I know it's an old word, but idolatry. And, and yes. idol, anything that you put in place, that that's the knowledge of it in your life is greater than the knowledge that God is supreme. So we love the gift of people, but actually we should love the giver of the gift even more. We love, we love finance as provision, but God, the ultimate provider, we should love him more. And there's a sense where over the years, we as people, uh, especially when it comes to the Western construct, is that we've created lots of idols. Uh, we've even created the church as an idol. And we've gone, boy, if you don't go to church, then da 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 And I'm not advocating you shouldn't go to church. But we've created church life and the culture of church as an idol. And God's saying, no, I want you to cast down these idols. And by casting them down, it doesn't mean you destroy them. It means that, you know, I'm not telling you to go out there and destroy your your brand new Mercedes that you've just bought for £40,000, <laughs> fully loaded. No, I'm not saying that. Cast it down. I'm saying Don't do that. Don't do that. on the throne of your heart yeah. so that, that, that you hold the things that you possess lightly. There's a lyric in it that says, let nothing in my breath be compared to you. What does that mean? Not even my job and the things that I'm doing or the people who know me for my music. Let not that be compared to you. Because it can't stand again. Let nothing that I possess take the place of you. So there's a sense where I'm really encouraging the listener um, to do that. Now, um, being, a, being a worship leader and a songwriter, most of the platforms that I play on um, in this country um, are churches. And I needed to create a song that was performance, but not performance. A song that congregations can sing. Now, yeah. let's give you an idea of the demographics. As a black worship leader, yeah. um, um, in this country, there's 65 million people, and black people take up 3% of the population. Yeah. Okay? And I realized that where God had called me to was actually wider than the community that I came out of. So, and, and, and what happened was, so the music that I did for it, because we're actually releasing the song, we're releasing the content, Yeah. you know, um, and um, there's some things I learned along the way. Um, you know, when you turn up to church to sing, the songs that you're singing, most of the songs are not written by uh, black worship leaders per se. Not that you've got a black audience or anything like that, but they're written by majority uh, mainstream white writers all we have done within the black church community um, is we've taken these songs and we put our own flavor on it and when we put our own flavor on it then we're much more comfortable with the song so we put our flavor on. we may put a soca beat on it we may put a reggae beat on it we may put a straight just straight head church of god beat on it or we put a gospel thing on it but actually the original <laughs> songs weren't written god beat. i love that yeah. a church of god right. beat uh, what does you that know, sound you know, like? <laughs> no, um, Church of God beat, I always say, is a bit like a scar. Scar meets gospel, you know? Like, I goodbye, you. word. <laughs> you know? It's kind of like a pseudo reggae, reggae gospel. And all of those things, we use that music as, we use those music as, a, as flag bearers for who we are. Um, my journey as a worship leader has taken me into places where um, my, my, my black culture has not is not there. Therefore, I needed to write and create content because it's the content that changes somebody's life, not the beat. It's the content that changes somebody's life. I need to write content and put it in a casing that people will have. And and That's I'm going to give you the, the, the reason how God got me to do that. I was in India, and I was at a restaurant in India. Yeah. And and and. And I sat down to eat, and I'm not a great Indian restaurant goer. I like Chinese, um, and um, and I order what I normally order, which I know is safe for me from the Asian restaurant that fits my palate. And it came, and I tasted it, and I went, 
wow, this tastes different from the UK. And this is a God moment. And the guy turned to me and he goes, oh, in the UK, you have spices, but not the natural spices we have. Right. And I went, yeah. okay, that makes sense. Then he says, he goes to me, this is what he said, he goes, but in the UK, we have anglicized the Indian food. So he said the word anglicized, and I went, what's that? What's that? So I came back to England, and I was about to do an album called Devoted. And, and what happened was, this word kept on reverberating, anglicized. And I asked God about it, and God said, what have you got in your hand? And I went, nothing. And he goes, what have you got in your hand? I went, nothing, right? This is an open vision. And, and then I went, well, all I've got is my guitar. And you can see, my, well, you can't see my background, but <laughs> I've got my guitar. So he goes, put more guitar in your music. So I was like, because most of my music before then was keyboard led. Yeah. Because that's the gospel thing. Long and short of it, this is what happened. Again, in this open vision, I responded to it. The first thing that I did was I went online and I went, what's the number one takeaway food in the UK? Why would you ask that question, Noel? Guess what the answer was? Indian. Indian food. Indian food is the number one takeaway food. Not fish and chips, not McDonald's, not... Ca now, Indian not food Chinese. is the number <laughs> Not Chinese. Indian food is a five billion pound industry in the UK. In the UK alone? Alone. I went, oh my days, I've just found the key. So guess what I did? I started to add more guitars. Why? I'm not faking it as a guitarist because most people who know me know that I'm a guitarist. You're a guitarist first. That's, that's where it started. And that's what God will say, what's in your hand? Okay. So I started writing songs that the 94% of churches in this country yeah. can understand and hear, and it's, it tastes right, so they sing it. So no longer are you a part of the ecology, you become part of the economy. So I just threw that in there, because sometimes people ask me, what's the secret? I don't have a secret. The only secret I have is the Holy Spirit. At my age, I should be retiring, they say. But at my age, I'm getting ready to keep it moving. And you know so this what, song, I am, I am so I'm, glad that you've said that, because I mean, you know, Let's face it, every day we get a little bit older, don't we? Totally. Right? And, and when you get to, <laughs> dare I say, our age, yeah. you really have to start considering what's, gonna, what's down the road for you in the next five, ten years. Absolutely. What is, down, what is down the road for Noel Robinson in the next five, ten years, would you say? Okay, there's two, there's two things. Um, I don't know. And secondly, I know. I know because I'm, I know a man that knows. So I, I have this statement I say to myself, a generation is not defined by age. They're defined by revelation. You can have an 80 year old person right now who's got an iPhone, who knows how to Skype, who knows how to go onto Facebook, who knows how to do Instagram, knows how to take pictures. You've, you've, just, to... you've just described, right? Or you're just, you're just describing my godmother who's in right. Jamaica. He's in Jamaica. Then, go on, carry on. <laughs> and then you can have, I'm going to tell you, and then you can have the same 80-year-old yeah. who's got an original Nokia phone. They right. don't know how to answer. Um, they don't know how to answer messages, so you can't leave messages on that. They don't so, know how to do text. They, so they just don't know how to text. They just know that they press a button, R1, and R1 is, is my son's number. R2 is my daughter's number. R3 is my brother and sister. So they just, <laughs> it's, it's programmed for them by their children. What am I saying is that a generation is not defined by age, but by revelation. The key is this. If um, Connell Sanders, at 80 years old, can discover a, discover a seasoning that when he, co when he coats it in chicken, that people like it, mm. at 80 years old, and he uses his pension to create that, he's long gone. He's long gone. But right now, that Kentucky Fried Chicken family don't live like how granddad does live or great granddad lives. Exactly. They're living in the stream of prosperity that one idea, one idea formed. All I'm saying is that 
I don't know what my tomorrow is going to be like, but I know a man that with one idea, with one opportunity, with one coin in one fish can keep you going for years. Not only you, so but, I subscribe but, but, but to the that rest of your, of your generation. The rest of your generation, right. just like Colonel, Colonel Sanders. And I, I'm glad you drew that analogy because um, some people have excuses right now. Some people have excuses. Oh, I'm too. I'm not. I'm not old enough. I'm. I'm too old, and you know, just. And you, you know, I mean, look, Colonel Sanders at a ripe old age came up with this recipe, you know, and it, age didn't have anything to do with it. It's it's about Change it's about old. doing what God has called you to do, and, Absolutely. and not and not being put off by by um by age or or anything of that nature. So I'm um, I'm um, yeah. You know, so, so if we look, if you we know look a at man word, who knows. You know a yeah, man who knows. The right? word calling. Calling the word calling is about assignment. You know, I always use this statement that we're spiritual people having an earthly experience. So it doesn't end here. Right? And well, we know that, right? But while you're here, you have an assignment. The assignment is that you are a worshipper who happens to be. What do you mean by that, Noel? Your worshiper happens to be a broadcaster. Your worshiper happens to be a father. Your worshiper happens to be a, a mother. A worshiper happens to be unemployed. Your worshiper happens to be a student. Your worshiper who happens to be a lawyer. Your worshiper happens to be a carpenter. Your worshiper happens to be a refuge collector. Your worshiper who happens to be like, you know, a, a dental nurse. Your worshiper happens to be an administrator. Your worshiper who happens. Why? Because when worship defines you, what you are saying, your relationship with heaven defines your earthly, your earthly calling. So what happens is that oftentimes we have put calling in a box and said, right, the only callings that really matter are the ones that look like the four walls of the church. So we're called to be an evangelist. We're called to be a preacher. We're called to be this in church. And I go, but did you know that the God doesn't exist only in church? And therefore, he can call you to politics. But know that when he calls you to politics, that you are a worshipper, a son of God, who is called to politics. You are a worshipper who's called to things that, that impact life culturally. A worshipper happens to be a musician. A worshipper happens to be a worship leader. A worshipper who happens to be... Now, the word worship is not singer. The other words I would use is you're in relationship. You are a son of God. You're in relationship with God. It means that if God is your father, he's already set up your tomorrow. And if you're a worshiper, you're connected to the revelation of who he is, but you're connected to the revelation of who he says you are. So he said to Noah at the grand old age of 120, build an ark. Noah is a worshiper who happened to be a carpenter. And he builds the ark exactly the dimension that God asked him to do. The scary thing was there was no rain. Rain had never happened in the earth. The earth was watered by a mist. But God said there's a rain coming. He's probably thinking, man, I need to write a song called Rain, Rain on me. Anyway, leave that. But guess what? He starts to build something in his life where he starts to build something that had never existed before. And guess what happened? When the rain came, who was the savior of the world? Noah. Abraham, God told Abraham, we can go through the Bible, we told Moses, everywhere I see it, I see worshippers like all these guys. And the first thing about worship, and this is what it is, it's not the music, it's obedience. So when I wrote this song, it was in obedience to what God was doing and telling me to do. Yeah. So once I've done it, I leave it to him. So this calling thing, you are walking in your calling as a broadcaster because you're a worshipper. In obedience. It's you not a spiritual. Are, you are walking in in obedience, and that is that is. Um, I mean, you know, it says in God's word that obedience is better than sacrifice. You know, um, your work. You're definitely. I see physically the way you are walking. Um, it must be in obedience. Um, I love everything that you do know, and um, I just pray that we will continue to support your ministry. It's Thank so you. important that we that we stand with our, our women and men of God, especially the ones who were spearheading 
like yourself, Noel. You've been you've been in the industry for how long now? Over twenty five years. years. 25. Over twenty five years. How many albums have you recorded? Uh, seven. Seven. Okay. Now, now you are on unrivaled rides on the um, the tales of the global release of um, your twenty twenty one release uh, that you collaborated with Andy Fagan. Uh, we seek well, your kingdom. Yeah, that was a single. Yeah, that was a single. Um, yeah. So you know, we're hoping and we're praying that you are unrivaled does the same you know that it that people not only adopt the song in their hearts because it is one of those types of songs that you know once you hear it a few times and like i said before I, i've been playing it for a while and um i find myself it's very infectious you know when you're That's when right. you're singing praises unto an, an unrivaled god yeah. it gets into your spirit yeah doesn't it, it just there's something about it now thank you what yeah that's what, do you know, because I'm singing God's word. I'm singing God's word. I, I, and that's one of the things I always do. Every isn't, there, is, I, isn't there something special about doing that? When you sing, when you sing the Bible, when you sing the verses and, yeah, you know. Uh, the Bible says this, faith comes by hearing, hearing, hearing by the word of God. The, the inc inc incredible thing about, uh, in this earth, uh, the biggest um, component, that not component, but the biggest attribute that we have in this in this life is faith. The Bible says it like this: Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Mm. Right? When we come to God, we have to first believe that He is. He is God, and He's a reward of them that diligently seek Him. He shows up, and 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 also faith is the economy of heaven. It means that every promise of God for your life. You can only access it by faith. In actual fact, you can't have a worship service without faith. In actual fact, you can't live in this world without faith. You've got to believe in something. In actual fact, we have a, 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 part, a, a faith DNA in us. Yeah, that as people, right, yeah. we have to believe in something. Yeah. Believe in, and, believe and in this something is where idolatry for comes. anything. Absolutely. And this is where the idolatry comes in. Mm. That you'll believe that your job is your provider. Mm. Uh, that, that's what you do because you're earning 40 grand a year but actually your job is not your provider god is the provider because he provided the job yeah amen amen <laughs> so it's no yeah, so no singing god's word is important it definitely is um can i just take time to say thank you so much for um taking time out from your busy schedule um the Single has been released. It was released on the 27th of August. Um, I suggest that you go get yourself a copy today. Yeah. Uh, and can I also remind everybody that um, Noel Robinson's latest album, I Surrender, is out now. Go get yourself a copy. Yeah. Uh, if you want to get hold of Noel, I, I would go to noelrobinson.com. Is that right? Yeah, yeah noelrobinson.com website, yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, stick bookings in front of at noelrobinson.com if you want to have Noel at your church. It would be a great idea as well. I remember, Noel, can I just, um, just, I love to remember um, things that brought smiles to my face. And one of the um, uh, memories I, I have, a fond memory of going to KICC when they were at their old location. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Noel Robinson, New Image. Um, and you had Donna uh, and her sister oh, part of the lineup. Man, I tell you, the red carpet inside um, KICC. Yeah. Man, that was that was such a great worship experience for me. And yeah. um, you know, I love reminiscing about things. Yeah, like we had that. we had a, we had a, a just well just about two thousand people that came. Yeah, to the event. No, and, if people um, want to get hold of you, I, how can they do that? If they, if you, are you on social if, if networks social, and stuff? Yeah, social network. Noel Robinson UK. Yeah. Um, on Instagram, Noel Robinson on Facebook, Noel Robinson UK on Twitter. I'm on all the digital platforms. And Instagram I've, as well, right? Yeah, I, Noel Robinson UK. I'll join TikTok, but I don't know how to work it. But <laughs> nevertheless, get, get, one of, get one of the nephews to show you. That's right. That's <laughs> or what your, or your nieces. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Listen, thank you so much Actually. for being our guest on today's program. Thank you. Um, 
no doubt I'll be hooking up with you again because you're the type of guy, if I want to get the inside role on the industry or anything like that, with over 25 years of experience, you're the, you're the go-to guy. Yeah. Yes, definitely. Thank you so much for being my guest on today's program. Um, bless you, man. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. So there you go. Noel Robinson, praise and worship leader, um, artist, songwriter, musician, extraordinaire, joins us on the show today. Uh, I do thank you for stopping by and uh, keep it this way for more interesting interviews just like this one today. I really do appreciate you. Take care now. Until next time. Rightly out.